So in previous sessions, we looked at who Jesus is, and we discovered that he was the Son of God, and he was the Messiah, the Anointed One, the Promised One, who was going to come and achieve God's purposes on the earth. We looked at why did he have to come, and we saw that uh, you know, back in creation, back at the beginning of time that we were created to reflect the image and likeness of God, but because of sin, because of our rebellion against God, there became a separation. So Jesus had to step in, God had to step in and fix that. And we learned that he fixed that by taking all of our sin, taking all of our depravity, everything that we've done wrong, he placed it on himself and he died and he rose again. In his death and in his resurrection, he essentially inaugurated the kingdom of God, where he himself is now king over the earth. He is the king over the creation. And though we might not see it, what does that mean for me today? What does it mean that Jesus is king? What does it mean that the kingdom of God is here? And what does it mean that I've made a decision to follow Jesus? How does that change my life today? Well, there's a few things that I just really briefly want to look at. And, um, and the, the great thing is, is once you make a decision to follow Jesus, you are now in a lifelong journey or you are in a lifelong relationship of getting to know him more and more. You're not going to know everything about God, everything about Jesus, really in this lifetime. He's so big, we cannot comprehend everything. But the great thing is, is that he is, now, he, he is, he is not a distant God. He is a very intimate and a very near God. And he wants to daily have this relationship with you where you get to actually grow in the knowledge of God. You get to actually grow in the experiential knowledge of God, Paul says in his book of Ephesians. You get to actually interact with him daily. You get to communicate with him. You get to read about him. You get to read his promises for your life and his promises for creation and for humanity. But the big thing and probably the, the one that you're going to hear the most is that what difference does it make in your life today? It means that now... Today, you are back in a relationship with God the way that it was intended. You and I, as we talked about, were created to be in a relationship with God. Being separated from that relationship with Him left, if you want to say, a God-shaped hole in our life. People, different people coming from different backgrounds try and fill that hole in different ways. We might use it, uh, we might try and fill that hole by accumulating a lot of stuff. We might fill that hole through relationships and sex or through substance abuse. We might try and find a fulfillment for this emptiness that we might feel or this pain or we just know there's not something right, but what can we do to actually fix it? That hole is now actually fixed because we're in a relationship with God. We are back in this relationship that we were created to be in. Now, you have to understand that not everything's going to be perfect. I'm sure since the, since the time you've made a decision to follow Jesus, to watching this video, stuff might have happened to you. Things might have happened to you. God is not, God, God has not brought you into relationship with Him to make your life perfect. He has brought you in relationship with Him to recreate you into the image that you were supposed to be so that you can go out and recreate the world into the image that it was supposed to reflect. So you now being in this relationship with God, the sheer fact that you are in this relationship means that your sins are forgiven. There's going to be maybe some people you might hear a few things that now in order to stay in this relationship with God, that you have to be perfect, that you have to get your behavior right. Well, can I tell you there is no such thing as a perfect Christian and there will never be such a thing as a perfect Christian. Being a perfect Christian is not the point. The point is growing daily in your relationship with God and learning more and more to reflect His character and His nature to the world around you. You will mess up. You will stuff up. You will have tendencies to go back to the things that you were before. The difference is being in a relationship with God means that you now have a choice. You no longer have to be a slave to those things. You no longer have to obey those urges, but you are now in a relationship with God. He has set you free from those to worship Him, to be in that relationship with Him, to serve Him in essence. Not only are you now in a relationship with God, but you're in a relationship with other believers. You see, how we see our relationship with God is often how we will see our relationship with other people. If we approach God by thinking that we have to behave right in order to, make, to be right with God, if we approach God thinking that we have to earn His love or earn His favor, that's exactly how we're going to treat each other. We're going to love people not based on an unconditional love, not based on loving them for who they are or for the, for, for the image that they were created in. We're going to love people based on their performance. We're going to love people based on 
does it suit me now? Am I happy with how they are? Have they offended me? I've given them my love, but have they earned it? I've given them my respect, but have they earned it? And if they don't, I can withdraw it. That's not how God has treated with us. You no longer have to live in a fear of, of does God love me like my parents love me? Does God love me like my friends love me? God loves you unconditionally. You didn't do anything to deserve his love, and can I promise you, you can't do anything to unearn his love. You are now in a relationship knowing that God accepts you for who you are, but he also loves you too much to leave you there. As I said, he's in the business of, of recreating us, of remaking you into his image, of, of working on the inside of you so that you can reflect his image to the world. A lot of people think that you've got you've to work on your behavior. That's not Christianity at all. Christianity is not working on behavior. In fact, you cannot change your behavior. God changes your behavior as you grow in a relationship with Him. As you come to understand who He is, His character and nature will come out of you. Being in a relationship with God means that you're a part of His community. You're a part of His people. That people is known as the church. And we're going to talk about that in another session coming up. But essentially, God has reconciled us not only to Himself, but to each other. He has created a new humanity. He is putting things right back between people, which means that now, as we've experienced God's love for ourselves, we freely show and demonstrate that love to other people. God served us by doing things for us that we could not do for ourselves. We cannot, we did not do anything to deserve that sacrifice that he paid on the cross. And therefore, we treat others the same way. We don't wait for others to earn our love, but we freely give our love to other people and serve other people, put their interests before ours because that's how Jesus treated us. That's how God treated us. We are in this relationship known as the church. And as, this, as, the, as the people of God, as the church, God didn't just leave us alone to get on with things. He didn't just, you know, go up into heaven and is now watching down from heaven as we scramble to try and get things right. He has empowered us with His Holy Spirit. You see in the book of Acts that, that Jesus, before He left, He said, I'm going to send my helper. I'm going to send the Holy Spirit and He will empower you for the work of the ministry. And I'll explain what the work of the ministry means in just a moment. But Jesus sent His Spirit, the Holy Spirit, who you read about in the Old Testament and the New Testament, to empower you for ministry. We're going to also look at a session. We're going to talk about the Trinity, and we're going to look at the Holy Spirit a little bit more. But right now, you can understand that when you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, He comes and He lives on the inside of you, meaning you're not alone in this world. He is with you. He is never going to leave you. He is never going to forsake you. When you go through the difficult times of life, you no longer go through it by yourself. You go, it with, go through it with God working in you in the situation that you're facing. But not only that, remember, we're reconciled to each other. We're part of a community, so we're not doing this life alone. We're doing it with God, and we're doing it with other people. And I would encourage you, don't let this Christian walk be something that you do just with Jesus in your bedroom. This is meant to be outworked in a community with other people. You need other people to help you in this relationship with God. You need other people to encourage you. We are meant to be in relationship, not only with God, but with other people, empowered by the Holy Spirit to make a difference in this world. Jesus uh, also, he said to his disciples before he left, go out into the world and make disciples of all nations. Now, a lot of people think that 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 means we're supposed to go out into the world and we're supposed to share our faith. And yes, there is an element of that, but more so we're supposed to declare that God has done something in the world. He has taken all the pain of humanity upon himself, as we've talked about. He is now Lord. He is now King. And as a result, things are going to be different. As a result, we as his people are going to be a different sort of people than what we see going on in the world around us. We have a choice. Now, are we going to continue to reflect the hate and the pain of the world that we've experienced back onto other people? Or are we going to absorb that knowing that Jesus has taken it from us, knowing that Jesus has dealt with it, given us the strength to deal with it? Are we going to take that pain and reflect it back out? Or are we going to take that pain and reflect the love of God back onto other people? In essence, are we going to serve humanity or are we not? Right before Jesus um, ascended into heaven to be with God the Father, he told his disciples that they were to go out into the world 
and make disciples of all nations. Essentially, they were to go out and share with the world what God has done, that God was indeed king. And as a result of that, things were now going to be different. The enemy has been defeated. The, the, the world no longer has to operate through hatred, but you can operate through the love of God because God has overthrown the enemy God has overthrown evil. He is saying that we are to go out and help other people realize that God is a loving God, that God wants to be in a relationship with them, that God is not angry with them, that God is not judging them. He's ready to embrace them into relationship. That's our task to bring other people into human and to bring other people into this relationship with God. And of course, we do it with each other. We do it together. We do it with the Holy Spirit living inside of us. But not only that, we are to work for the kingdom. I talk about the kingdom of God is established. What does that look like? Well, you look at what God, you look at what Jesus did for us. We see that you heard in one of the other videos that Jesus is the imprint of God, a loving God. And we are to reflect this loving nature out to other people around us. In essence, Jesus came to establish his kingdom and he's called us to actually do the same thing. His mission has now become our mission. He came to establish the kingdom and we do work for the kingdom. And what does that mean? It means that we go out and we love humanity and we serve humanity. Instead of uh, starting instead of starting wars, we try and make peace. The thing that I love about Jesus is, is that Jesus didn't, didn't free people through violent means, but he, he embraced his enemies and he loved his enemies and he forgave his his enemies. And that's what God has called us to do. That's how we can make a difference in the world today. By instead of reflecting the pain of the world back onto the world, we can actually love it, love it back. We can actually serve it. Serve it not so that we can get anything out of it, but serve it because God so loves the world. We can, we can, we can serve it to bring about the kingdom of God. We, uh, Jesus came to, to, to bring heaven to earth. You'll see in, in the Lord's Prayer. We can pray, uh, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That is what Jesus has done. He has brought heaven to earth in, his, in himself, in his teaching, in his death and resurrection. And we, as his hands and feet now, carry on that mission. We bring heaven to earth. Essentially, that means that with one hand, just as Jesus did, we kneel down with the people who are in pain and poverty and brokenness. And in the other hand, we grasp the promises of God and we bring the two together in the name of Jesus. That is our mission. That is our mandate. We know that we're not going to be perfect. We know that we're going to mess up, but we know that God will love us unconditionally over and over again. He's the God of another chance and another chance and another chance. And as we do, do life with other people, we get to reflect that same forgiveness and that love on them. We get to reach down into the, into the hurting humanity and we get to bring an answer to them. We know while, while, while the world is concerned about getting more, we're concerned about how can we be more generous to help other people out of poverty. While people are pushing down the poor and while people are being oppressed, we get a chance to actually be a voice to those who have no voice. We get a chance to, to, uh, to overthrow the evil that is still in the world today. Not necessarily by waving banners and flags in front of parliament or in front of the White House, but we get to actually step down with people in their mess and give them a handout. We get a chance to, out of our abundant resource that God has given us, we get a chance to freely and generously give it to other people, give it to them so that they have a chance to. We get a chance to bring healing to people who, are, who have experienced brokenness in families. We get a chance to help other people reconcile. We get a chance to bring the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. The Holy Spirit working inside of us empowers us to do this. And I pray that as you, as you learn about God, as you read the Bible, as you pray, as you spend time with Him, you're going to understand just who you are. You're going to understand what it is that God has called you to do. And you're going to find that you don't need to go to some distant land to bring the kingdom of God. You don't need to, you don't need to travel to India or, or, or China or Africa or anywhere. You can start right where you are, right with your friends and right with your family, right with your co-workers. These are people who are broken, who are hurting. These are people who do not have that relationship with God and therefore there's that emptiness on the inside of them. Who knows what they're going through? Who knows how they're trying to fill the void? But you've got the answer. You have a chance to outwork the love that you've received to them. Instead of just the shallow conversations of, hey, how was your weekend? How was your week? You get an extra chance to go, no, how are you? 
God cares about you, and therefore I care about you. How can I help you? I have an answer to the thing that you need. You get a chance to make a difference in this world, not necessarily by traveling to other parts, but right where you are, starting with one person, making a difference in their life. How can you bring the kingdom of God from heaven to earth and their life today? You, in essence, get a chance to be Jesus to other people. How are other people going to see Jesus in this world? How are other people going to going to, um, going to see, come into a relationship with Him? Are you going to wait for somebody else to do it, or are you going to take your calling seriously and go, it's me. I'm the answer. I'm the one. There's lots of different ways to do it. Some people love to stand up on a street corner and, and shout out what Jesus has done and call people to repentance and all that. Not sure how effective that is today, but if you want to do that, go for it. But perhaps the better way is out of the relationships that you have, out of the relationships that you've developed, knowing that you've got a church family that supports you, knowing that you've got God working on the inside of you, what's the need around you? Can you go out into your world, back to your family, back to your workplace with open ears and open eyes, ready to see the need, ready to spot the gap, ready to jump in? Because I promise you, this is what you're here for. You will not fail. There might be hard times. There might be tough times. You might face rejection, but that's okay. God has not rejected you. God has empowered you. Your church family is supporting you to go out there and bring His kingdom into your workplace, bring his kingdom into your family, bring the love of God, the healing love of God into those situations, make the world a better place for one person at a time, and you just watch what God does through your life. You just watch how this creates a sense of purpose and a sense of meaning that you've been longing for your whole life. You just watch how you find value, how you find community, how you find relationships. You find this fulfillment all because God has saved you. God is with you. God has reconciled you into his community of people and he has empowered you to go out and change the world for him.